Good morning, everyone. Just a really quick announcement. I did make a note in your weekly uh, bulletin this week, but just in case you haven't had a chance to read that yet, I did want to let you know that choir rehearsals will resume again this coming Wednesday, September 8th, and we'll be meeting each Wednesday from 7 to 8.30 p.m. right here in the Arbor Sanctuary. And since September is right around the corner, I have placed a couple sign-up sheets at the front desk in the lobby for you to sign up. This is for existing choir members as well as anyone new looking to join. I'll also be around to answer any questions if they come up. Um, so please feel free to come and talk to me today or at any time in the next month. Um, also for any instrumentalists, if you're interested, please come and talk to me as well so we can figure out how we might be able to use you in the future. And for those of you on Zoom, um, as well as our out-of-town guests, please feel free to send me an email with your interests and perhaps a date when you think you might be joining us again. Um, you can find my email on the website. It's juliana at lambofgodchurch.net. Um, so sign-up sheets are in the lobby. Please come and talk to me, and I look forward to chatting. Thank you.
the bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is a reading from 2 Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing food from the first fruits, as Elisha, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But this servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give to the people and let them eat, for thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of God. The word of the Lord, thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. The second reading is from Ephesians. For this reason, I, know, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of the glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the good news of Jesus Christ this day, the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, what are we to, to, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test them, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not have been enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he uh, distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When th they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing shall be lost. So they gathered them up 
and filled the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. They filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus uh, realized that they were about to come and make him, um, to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, the disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to make him in, take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace is yours and peace. Shalom from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our gospel this morning is one of the most familiar and favorite stories of Jesus. Here we have this young boy. He has five barley loaves, two fish. He gives them to Jesus, and Jesus takes them. He gives thanks. He breaks the bread, distributes it the same with the fish. And we are told that 5,000 people are fed. And the leftovers, they fill 12 baskets. Now, many people, and there have been many suggestions as to how this miracle took place. Many are content to believe that Jesus literally took the five loaves and the two, uh, the two fish and multiplied them so that everybody was fed. But God has also given us minds to reason, to think, to be able to make choices. And if we need some further um, explanation, there are two that I offer. The first is this. It has been suggested that this was not so much a meal as a sacrament, that it is a gift of God. When we gather at the Lord's table, when we sit or where we stand at the rail, all that we receive is, is just a, a, a morsel of bread, a sip of wine. And yet, when we leave from, from the Lord's table, we are satisfied. Our souls have been fed, and we are able to go back out into the world with a sense of encouragement that God is with us. We see it as a spiritual meal, and that it is suggested that that is what happened uh, for those who were gathered. They received a mere crumb, and yet it somehow brought a sense of peace to their souls. But it's also been suggested that it happened like this. Many in the crowd had brought something to eat, knowing that they would be away from home the entire day. Uh, but many had nothing. They were caught up in the moment. They heard that Jesus is in the neighborhood, and they wanted to be near because they had heard of all that he had done in terms of healing the sick. So those who, uh, who had food were unwilling to share it, and they wanted for a very human reason, to keep it to themselves so that they might be fed. Um, but it's also been suggested um, that there were, that once they got away and they saw what was happening, that they decided to share so that those who came with nothing would be able to have something. And what Jesus does he produces the five barley loaves, the two fish, and he says, it's all I've got. 
Let's share it. Let's see what happens. And everyone who had brought the, the food with them shared it. And those who had nothing received because of their sharing the gifts that they had brought. If we understand it this way, it is a miracle. It is a miracle that where Jesus' influence changed the hearts of those who were selfish to become selfless. That they were willing to share of their gifts so that others could be fed. And think of it this way. What it did, it, it lifted up in their hearts a sense of love, a sense of concern for their neighbor, so that they who had something were willing to share with those who had nothing. And it was an awakening of active concern for their fellow human beings. So here's the question. Was it a miracle that Jesus was able to take those meager gifts and multiply them in a way that 5,000 people were fed? Or was the miracle that Jesus was able to take this selfless act of a young child, the gifts that that child had, gave him to Jesus, and Jesus then was able to make the miracle happen. So think about that. The one thing to keep in mind is it was a miracle of the awakening of a sense of generosity in human hearts. And it was so significant that this is the only miracle that is found in all four Gospels. Something indeed happened, and people were touched, and they have not forgotten it, and all four of the Gospel writers have included it. So however we want to interpret the miracle, here's what I want to focus on. We need to identify the people the people without whom Jesus would not have been able to create the miracle that, that he did. And in these people, maybe we can see something of ourselves. Certainly I see something of myself at times of what we do or, because we're human, we fail to do in living the gift of life that God has so graciously given us. So first we have Philip and we have Andrew, the two brothers. We know who Philip is. It's like us at times, kind of shrug our shoulders. What can I do? Not my responsibility. I pass. Andrew, on the other hand, was the one who said, I'll see what I can do. And I'll trust Jesus to do the rest. And so what does Andrew do? He brings this boy to Jesus. And this boy takes his five barley loaves and his two fish and he gives them to Jesus. And he provided this resource for a miracle. We never know what kind of miracles can happen if we are willing to let go with that which we have and allow Jesus to put them to use, to accomplish God's will. And we also have this boy. And remember, what did Jesus say to the adults? You'll never get into the kingdom unless you are like a child. The selflessness, the enthusiasm, the wanting to be involved of a child. This boy didn't have much to offer, but what he did have, he shared it with Jesus. And if he hadn't first offered what he had, those five barley loaves and the two fish, there might have been one random act of kindness left 
in history. So we have Andrew, we have Philip, and we have the boy. With whom do you, with whom do I, identify? And think about that. With whom do I wish that God might be able to use me? Especially as I allow myself and the gifts that God has so graciously given me that to be used, however we choose to share them. Because the reason for the gifts that God has given us is that they might equip the saints for ministry, um, for the building up of the body of Christ. Um, it's what our baptism is all about. That's why we're here. Baptism was our call to ministry. And the reason we come to worship is to be fed in word and sacrament so that we can return to the world to which we are sent. You see, when I was here several months ago, I mentioned how do we share of ourselves and I mentioned name tags, and I was surprised how many people mentioned afterwards, you know, I never really thought what a simple act that could be. It is. Don't put it back up. Wear it when you go out for brunch. And if somebody asks about it, kind of like, oh, I'm a member of Lamb of God. Where do you attend? And if they say, well, I have no church home, welcome to LOG. And why for that? Because God needs us. God needs this congregation to be able to share of itself so that the mission and ministry of this congregation here in Estero might continue to grow and to advance what God's love is all about. Pray about it. Think about, dream about what yet is to be. Think about that. And expect, be hopeful of a miracle. And it begins with you. Amen. Christ has no body here but ours, no hands, no feet here on earth but ours. Ours are the eyes through which he looks on this world with kindness. Ours are the hands through which he Let us confess our Christian faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. We pray for the church. Bless the ministries of our neighboring congregations especially. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us the spirit of collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray for creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We pray for those who govern. Cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger are fed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, <clears throat> those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of those who call to you for healing, especially Autumn, John, Marion, Lori, Arlen, Dan, Jerry, Lexi, Brady, Marge, Sue, Jim, Tom, Bev, Alice, Lee, Terry, Karen, Debbie, Velma, Kim, Ruth, Everett, Dan, Connor, Don, Jennifer, and Jill. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray for this assembling. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is great. Is great. We give thanks for those who have died. As you sustain them through all their days, so dwell in our hearts that we may have the power to comprehend the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with your neighbor. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
speak with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and you give, and your love endures forever. You bring, you bring forth, you bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world a signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all time and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and shared it with him, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is God's new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. As you partake of the host, the body of Christ, broken for you. And as you partake of the, the wine, the blood of Christ,
poured out for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that you have now received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with his bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. peace. Share the good news.